Hi, uh, this is Worson, and I am a modder for Fallout 4. Um, and when I started modding, I found that it was very tedious when manipulating large amounts of entries. You say your mod is really big and you have a lot of, say, constructible objects or a lot of object modifications, which, you you know, if you have a lot of one, you're going to have a lot of the other, right? Um, it's very tedious updating, say, an object modification entry with, you know, inside each of the constructible objects. This can entail a lot of copying and pasting, and I'm going to show you how to do this in, in bulk using a script and manipulating Excel spreadsheets or open, for me, I use open office and I'll, I'll show you this in a second. But I find it easier to export it all, manipulate the data, and then import it back into FO4Edit. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to require two tools, automation tools for TES5 and either OpenOffice or Microsoft Office. To use this, you just download the automation tools to your desktop, and then you want to extract them into the FO4 edit folder. And it's going to put this right here, edit scripts. And it's pretty much, it, now it comes with a lot of scripts, but these are the ones that it's going to add right there. And we're going to talk about quick change and quick display. Now, if you haven't ever used scripts, scripts are accessible by right-clicking anything and hitting apply script. And then you use the drop-down menu up here to select the script that you want to apply. Now, we're going to be talking about these two, as I stated. The quick display allows us to export data. The quick change allows us to import data. Okay? So I'm going to do that because for this project, I need to apply all the object modification entries to the constructible objects. This would take me hours to do this by hand. I'm going to do it in just a few minutes using these scripts. So the first thing you want to understand about this, let me grab my note plus plus and notes here. Where are they? There they are. The first thing to understand is how to target the fields for, say, a constructible object. So let me select one of these. You'll notice here, these, these are all the, the data entries, right? And these are the headers, okay? So the goal here is we want to target specific headers within this, um, within this entry. So how we do that, let me pull this back up, is we want EDID, so you notice here, move this over, there's the EDID right there. And that's going to give us the title. I, you always want to do EDID because you want to be able to see what data you're working with when it goes into the spreadsheet. And then for me, I need this um, form ID. Now, if you notice right here, record header form ID, record header forward slash form ID. That's how you target a, a an entry that is underneath a header like this. You see how this is, you know, record header, and then underneath record header, there's a bunch of them. So it's easy to do just one level, but let me show you real quick how we would do something that has a lot of them. Um, for example, if we go over to, say, object modification, we've got um, right here, say, property one of these properties. Let's say we wanted to target property under uh, property, properties, and property. Well, to target that, we can do it like this. Uh, data, and then properties, and then property, and then you can do just the number as well. And this is helpful because often what will happen is underneath this item, it'll say like keyword, 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 keyword. It, they'll all be keyword. 
right? They'll all be named the same name. So it makes it difficult to target some of these entries when they're named that. That's why either a number or the, the text will work for this, okay? And you can actually, you know, if you, if you set it up right, you can export the whole thing. Um, now, one other thing I wanna cover real quick before we move on to do this import. Well, export and import. Um, so let's say I'm trying to do an import and this record does not exist yet. It's gonna throw an error, okay? You, you have to at least have this say null when you first do it. So if, let's say you're creating by hand a whole bunch of entries. You know, you can essentially duplicate entries to create all, the, all of the entries that you want. But then you have to manually go in and add these. Now, there are scripts that will do that as well, I think. But I haven't gone there, and it's not in the scope of this video. But needless to say, this can't just be blank. It has to actually show something, even if it's just null. So when you create all your entries, just go in and at least make sure the data you're going to import has at least a null entry, or it will throw an error. Okay. Now, another thing you cannot do, which kind of makes sense, is you can't update, say, this, this item here. You can't update this, this here, because this is actually generated by the system, and it's controlled by the editor ID. Now, you can alter the editor ID, but you can't alter this number that's attached to it, the form ID that's attached to it. So it's pretty much you can alter everything else in this entry, though. Okay, Okay. so let's get started. Let's go in, and first we're going to uh, export these two files here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a script to the constructible constructible object table and hit OK because we're on display. Hit OK. And let me pull up my... I always do this because when you, when you select this, it closes this out. So I always copy the path that I need to put into a text document just to make it uh, a little easier. I'm going to pull this on my other screen. There we go. And we want to hit export as CSV. And there we go. It exported everything. And now where that is, is it's inside the edit, the edit scripts folder. And it is called exported dot csv go ahead and delete that don't need it and so i'm going to open this up here I'm, i need to close these two real quick just close the ones that i had open okay so i'm going to hit this and open it up it's going to show me this window you're always going to want to um, open by comma, okay, and then double check down here. And you can see here it generates a record, EDID, and C name. And this is what I get right here, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as um, the constructible object. You can see I already did this once just to make sure that everything was going to go according to plan. So that's that file. And I, you always want to save it as a separate file because, you know, you want to do another export, right? So it makes sense that you need to save it as something else. So now we're going to do object modification. Apply script. And we're going to do EDID again but this time I need form ID. So it's record he header forward slash form ID. Export as CSV, hit OK. And now I've got another new exported data, okay? So we go to open this up. There we go. And we got record EDID and record header form ID. So I'm going to hit OK. And now, to look at them side by side, oh, I'm going to save this. 
as object modification. So now I've got two. I've got my constructible object and my object modification. Okay. Now you can see here these are old entries. X01 and these are all X02. And also if I sort, you can sort any of these tables by clicking on the header of the table like ABC and clicking right here. And what's going to happen is you want to hit extend selection to include these. Boom, there you go. So what I've got is I've got an old entry here. I'm going to clean this up real quick by removing the, forward, the, the worsen underscore and replace all. There we go. This will make them more uniform and I'll be able to sort it better. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. If you are creating all of your tables from scratch, it's really important to create a naming convention that will allow you to go in and bulk edit like this, okay? In other words, you want your constructible objects to match the names of your object modifications. So when you go to sort, things will line up easier, okay? Now for me, um, I, I, did, I went through this once to make sure I knew what I needed to do for this particular import and export. Um, and that is that I need to delete a few tables um, to clean this up and allow me to, you know, properly sort the data and import it. So I'm going to pause real quick and I'm going to do those couple little adjustments and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have deleted the, and there was only five tables in each one. Um, and for me, it was just some armor linings and stuff like that. So it was l just a few things that I knew previously that I did not want to, um, to modify. These are tables that I didn't need to do anything with. Um, so now you'll notice here, we, I've, I've got them sorted both. Um, I don't know, I think I did descending or ascending. Um, but they're, the, they're both sorted the same way. So if you notice, they're identical when you move across. Now, the way I like to do this to make sure that I'm not going to be importing data incorrectly um, is I always take the data I want to import and I copy it. And then I paste it in one of the tables. Now, we'll get rid of that. This will allow me to easier identify that they're all the same, that nothing's out of order, okay? So I would just basically go down, and what I usually do is I will cut it from this side over to here first, and one by one, or bulk, I will cut and paste them from this table over to here just so I have them lined up and I know if there's any mistakes and if there are any mistakes, um, inconsistencies, if you know maybe this table has some entries that this one didn't have, that sort of thing, it will allow me to identify those tables um, that are missing, okay? So I'll do that all the way down until I am finished. So I'm gonna do that real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, so I went through and I made, made sure that all of these match up with the old ones. Um, now, like I said, if you are creating this from scratch, a lot of this you're not going to have to do. I have to do this this round because I am taking entries that I copied from an older mod and I am basically creating new ones. Right, so because of my process, I had to go hit through and make sure that this is that this is correct. But now that I know that it is, whoops. Now that I know that it is, I can copy this table, or rather cut this table, and I can paste it right on top. Now I I also pasted this header. We don't want to do that. We want to put this back to C name. There we go. So now all of these have the new object modification entry that I want them to have. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to the construct 
CSV. And we'll go back to, oh, we got to close this. We can't do anything while it's open. All right, so we've closed that out. And now we're back at FO4 Edit. Now I'm going to open this up, and you can see here um, none of these have been changed, right? So we're going to go ahead and right-click this, Apply Script, and we're going to quick change this time. And we'll hit OK. And then we go Add, Import, and we want to type the name of our CSV file. So mine is construct.csv and hit OK. Boom. There we go. So there's the entries that I, that I removed. Those are the ones I deleted when I paused the camera. These are the ones we just added. So now we can go in and we can see that it applied the new object modification table to our constructible object table. And it's that easy. Once you understand the script and you get good at identifying the paths to these items, you will find this tool will save you hours and hours and hours of time. If you are a modder that's making a large mod or you know um, editing large mods, that sort of thing, this is an invaluable tool. Um, there, and there's, this is just scratching the surface. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Um, but I'll leave that to your imagination and the way you need to use it. So I hope you found this beneficial, and we'll see you in, in game.